Across the semi-arid landscape of prehistoric Mongolia, it is rare to see large life forms, even the dinosaurs. However, once a year, the migration of many species brings a lot of noise and movement to the usually still area. One of the most numerous travelers are the small yet agile Avamimus. At about a meter tall, these feathered oviraptors are omnivores that rely on their high speed to outrun predators. But they are not just sprinters. They can maintain a fast pace for long periods of time, making them a difficult catch. At this time of year, they pass through this arid environment in order to get to their breeding site. Along the way, they feed on the hardy desert plant life and any insects they can find. As one of the flocks pauses their journey to graze, one of the males has learned from past experiences where to find ample insects, termite mounds. They are quite numerous in this area and are an excellent source of protein. The problem is they shelter in their massive nests that Avamimus have no way of accessing. There is, however, a resident of this desert that specializes in finding termites and extracting them. The long and thin Mononychus, armed with a long snout and even longer tongue, and a single claw it uses to excavate termite mounds. These one meter long insectivores are solitary and rarely seen. However, the male Avamimus is in luck and spies a Mononychus by a nearby termite mound. Leaving his flock behind, he approaches the mound and soon realizes that there isn't one Mononychus, but two. Usually they are solitary, but this is a mated pair that will be together until the female lays her eggs. The Avamimus sees this as a bonus. Twice the Mononychus, twice the reward, and continues towards them. As he approaches the pair that are busy digging into the termite mound, both pause and stare at him. He knows from experience that Mononychus can be skittish, and getting too close to one will usually result in them moving out of the way in order to keep distant from the other species. However, as he gets within a meter of them, they both jump down from the termite mound and face him. This slightly startles him, and he stops in his tracks. The Mononychus pair then begin to chirp at him angrily, and bob their heads up and down while flapping their small arms. Evidently, when together, the smaller dinosaurs gain a bit of courage, and didn't want him taking their food. He tries to go around them, but the female jumps to the side, blocking his path, and the Avamimus barks in annoyance. But the male Mononychus bolts to his side and bites his leg. The Avamimus squawks in surprise and attempts to pull away, but ends up tripping over and falling on his side. As he tried to right himself, both of the Mononychus leapt upon him, they didn't bite because they lacked teeth, and they didn't scratch him because their arms were too short. Instead, they jumped on him. Each of them hopped on top of him, causing sand to fly in all directions. The Avamimus struggled to stand, as he was leapt on again and again. He pushed himself sideways, and then rolled to his feet, with the Mononychus continuing to jump on his back. When he got to his feet, he scurried away, not looking back. He reached his flock and then turned around, seeing the pair of Mononychus staring at him from the base of the termite mound. The rest of the Avamimus looked at him rather puzzled. They had never seen anything quite like what had just happened. The male Avamimus checked himself, but it appeared that he had suffered no injuries. The only thing damaged was his bride. The Mononychus pair feels that their point has been made, and returned to digging out termites. The Avamimus returns to feeding on the remaining plants. He has learned a lesson today, and gained a genuine dislike of Mononychus. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down the short yet swift Avamimus. Avamimus was originally discovered in the Megeti Formation, Mongolia in 1985. It lived between 85 and 70 million years ago in the late Cretaceous. It grew to about 1.5 meters long and stood about 1 meter tall, weighing around 2 to 5 kilograms. Avamimus was an oviraptor and had many of this family's distinguishing features, such as large eyes, a beak-like mouth, and long limbs. Though the skull of Avamimus wasn't very large, the brain and eyes were large for its size, cluing in that it was possibly quite intelligent. The bones dedicated to protecting the brain were also large. 
The beak was mostly toothless, with only a few small premaxillary present. This leads scientists to believe that Avomimus was a herbivore, or insectivore. The head was held on a long, slender neck. However, Avomimus lacks air sacs in its vertebra, suggesting that it was a more primitive oviraptor. It had short forearms, with the hand bones fused together like modern birds. Quill knobs were also identified on the forearms, confirming that Avomimus did have feathers. However, it was most definitely not able to fly. While no tail has been discovered, the shape of the hips implies that its tail was quite long. Its legs were very long and slender, with the shins being longer than the thighs, meaning that it was a quick runner, but also that it was adapted to keep high speed over a long distance, not just sprinting over a short distance. The leg bones of Avomimus often have prominent muscle scars, which has led to the idea that Avomimus, though a herbivore, would need to feed on insects regularly in order to get enough protein in order to develop strong leg muscles. Avomimus fossils are often found in groups, with the adults being close in size, which indicates this species had determinant growth. With the individuals in these groups being adults and subadults, it is suggested that these flocks were together in an area for potentially mating displays, with males competing for females and that they all died together, likely in a flooding event. The environment it lived in was an arid area with intermediate streams, but this formation it was found in is abundant with many small and often fragile dinosaur species, who usually don't fossilize well. It was another species in the abundant small omnivore niche that was very essential during the time of the dinosaurs, and I feel it's important to remind everyone that these otter dinosaurs did indeed exist. But what do you think of Avomimus? What lesser known dinosaur would you like me to do a breakdown on next? And until then, thank you for watching.